Hello, and welcome to Lecture 3 of the Traveling Waves Unit of Phys 1201. And this lecture is all about how we represent sinusoidal waves. We need to define some of the ways that we characterize waves, the, way th the ways that we describe them. So one is going to be the amplitude, and it works just the same way that we saw with oscillations. The distance from whatever we're calling our equilibrium to the largest displacement from it. So this wave here would have an amplitude of 4 centimeters. Then we need to know about wavelength. So here is a measurement of the wavelength. And you've probably seen this before, the peak-to-peak -peak distance. So in this case, from 3 meters to 15 meters, that's 12 meters, that's the wavelength. And we're going to use this funny curly letter. This is the Greek letter lambda. That's the Greek letter that says ol, ol as in length, which is why we use it. And of course, just as we saw with period, you can also go trough to trough. That'll be the same distance, and it'll also be the same distance from any point to the next place where the wave is doing exactly the same thing. And this should remind you of period because on a snapshot graph, these measurements of these lengths give us a wavelength. Very similarly, on a history graph, those same, well, I'll say distances, but they're not distances, they're times, give you the period. So the period and the wavelength you can think of as sort of almost the same thing, but one you measure on a history graph and one you measure on a snapshot graph sort of unsurprisingly, because wavelength and period are so similar to each other conceptually, there's a very close connection between them. And so here we can see this connection. So here's a wave, and I've invited this little surfer along, and I mean, he's here just to have fun, but I want him here because he gives us a way of labeling this crest. Now, before I had labeled places on the medium, strings or springs, by tying strings onto them, and those were then fixed in place. They would wiggle up and down with the medium, but they wouldn't follow the wave along. But this is different. I want to label this crest and watch where it goes. So this is a different sort of label. He's following this piece of the wave along. Whereas if there was a swimmer, treading water over here, they would not be carried along by the wave. They would go up and down with the water, which is not moving laterally. So if you were to watch this surfer, and by extension the wave they are on, moving 5 meters per second this way, and here we are at t equals 0, at t equals 2 seconds they would have moved 10 meters, which puts this peak right here. And at four seconds, they're here. And at six seconds, they're here. And at eight seconds, they're here. And I want you to notice that we started off with a peak at the origin, and we've returned to having a peak at the origin, but it's the peak that was over here when we first started looking at this. So notice that every point on the wave has gone through a full cycle. This point has gone all the way down and back up again. This point has gone all the way down and back up again. This point, which started down, has gone all the way up and back down again. So we've just watched a full period of this wave. Oh, look. Look how far the peak has traveled. It's traveled from where it was to where the next peak was when we first started watching. And so it's traveled a full wavelength. So what we've just seen here is a very useful little fact. In a time equal to the period, a wave travels a distance equal to its wavelength. And that means you can say, well, the speed, as always, is a distance traveled over a time taken. And so for any periodic wave, like a sinusoidal wave, the speed is just the wavelength over the period. And this now gives us a relationship between wavelength and period. Also notice that since the frequency is 1 over the period, you can rewrite this if you want, and sometimes it's more convenient, to write it this way. 
Our goal is to be able to represent sinusoidal waves, to write down expressions for them. We want a function. So here is a snapshot graph of a sinusoidal wave, and this one happens to have a wavelength of 6 meters. And so we can use the same sort of reasoning that we used for the function describing a simple harmonic oscillator in the last unit. We can say this one has its max at x equals 0, and so we can use a cosine. I'm writing this as a function of x and t, right? Because, of course, if we look at another time, the function will have changed, and this y represents how high a point on the medium is. So that must depend on the time, but it also depends on where you look on the medium. But, just like before, we can just read the amplitude off, and then we will have some function of position. And I'm leaving it as just a function of position at the moment, because I'm saying this is for t equals 0. And so now we just need to figure out what this stuff is. And we can actually do it very similarly to how we did it with the oscillations, where we found it was 2 pi over the period. And we're actually going to find almost the same answer here, but I'm going to argue it differently. Note that at this point, since the stuff times x is 0 here, and the next time a cosine has its maximum is when it has a 2 pi inside it, we need stuff times x to be 2 pi right here. Well, that allows us to figure out what stuff is, because right here, x is lambda. And so that means we get 2 pi over lambda is what this stuff turns into. And you can check that that gives us the right thing, right? If you go to x equals lambda, you get these lambdas cancelling, you just get cos of 2 pi, and you're at a max, just like you should be. But now note that a moment later, at a different time, the wave will have shifted. Now you can no longer use a cosine, because the cosine has to have its max at zero. And so we're left to figure out how to write the function now. Well, here's what is a seemingly unrelated piece of math that you will have learned in high school. Here's a parabola, and it's the most basic of parabolas, y equals x squared. And you will have learned in high school that you can shift this parabola over, say, by 2, by writing x minus 2 squared instead of just x squared. And this little trick works because now at x equals 2, you get a 0 in here, and so you've just moved the vertex, which is where the thing being squared is 0, over to here. Well, this little trick turns out to work for any function. If you take the variable and replace it by the same variable minus something or other, then you always shift the function over by that amount. This little mathematical trick turns out to be exactly what we need. Here we are with our wave. And right now it's looking like a cos function, and so we can write y at x and t equals 0 is just this, just like we saw. Now, if we wanted to shift it over by 2 meters, okay, and so that's at some other time. I've written t equals question mark because I don't know what time that is. But if we did want to move it over by 2 meters, we would just replace our x with x minus 2 meters, and that shifts it. Okay, but we don't want to be able, we don't want to just plug in distances. We want to have a function that works for all times. So, starting from here, we now want to shift over by the right amount for time t. Well, if you know how fast the wave is moving, that's easy, because at time t, it will have moved a distance vt. And so all you have to do is replace the x with x minus vt. And that gives you the function you need. This form is fine. It'll always work for us. But sometimes you don't know, say, the speed. So 
when that's true, you can use the fact that v is lambda over the period, or lambda f. And you could just replace that in there, right? So then you get And notice that if we multiply through, we're going to get some cancellation going on, and we get And one more thing, we could replace the 1 over t here with an f. So all of these different forms are equivalent, and you use them as convenient. Whichever one is the quickest way to write it down is usually the one you go with. One more thing. We built all of this assuming that the speed was like this, that we had a wave going to the right. Now, you know that if you're making a parabola, that this is a parabola with its vertex 2 over to the right, and if you want to put the vertex instead 2 over to the left, you would just use a plus there. And so it's the same thing. If the speed, well, if the velocity is like this, but by this v we mean a speed, so if this is a wave going to the left, then all you have to do is switch these pluses to my, or these minuses to pluses. Let's put this all together in an example. So here we have a cable, and we're using a motor to drive the end of it at 300 hertz with an amplitude of 2 millimeters. And we know the linear density and the tension of the cable. And recall, a couple of lectures ago, we saw that the wave speed on a string or a cable or anything or wire is the square root of the tension over the linear density. So if you work that out for this one, we're going to want to know this wave speed. It's going to be useful to us. So 800 newtons over, careful of units, right? You want to work in kilograms, so that's 0 0.02 kilograms per meter. And if you plug that into a calculator, you'll find that it's 200 meters per second. So that's going to be useful, but that's not going to be enough. Remember that we can write or we could write and there's one more form but let's look we already know v so if we just knew lambda we'd be able to use this form right so that's easy because we can just use that v is lambda f and we know f it's 300 hertz and we know v so that gives us Lambda. Lambda then is going to be v over f, and so that is 200 meters per second over 300 hertz, which is seconds to the negative one or one or per second or whatever, right? So that's two thirds, so that's 0 0.667 ish meters. And that's all we need. We can now write down our function that describes this wave. The amplitude is 2 millimeters. And now we're just going to write cos. And I'll give myself big brackets to work inside here. 2 pi over 0.667 meters all times x minus 200 meters per second times t, close all our brackets, and that'll work. And we could transform that into any of the other forms if we needed them for whatever reason.